Good morning. My name is Landry, and it's a pleasure to be here today to share with you a bit of what the Lord has put in my heart. Yeah, and uh, I thank God for my pastors, Pastor Scott and Pastor Fiona, for giving me the opportunity to stand here today. You know, I will always talk about them. Um, I always say those things about them. They are not like them out there. Pastor Scott and Fiona, they are just unique. Amen. So today, um, I actually want to speak to us about the chosen people. That's what the Lord has put in my heart. The chosen people. Why is it so small? <laughs> Yeah, the chosen people. That's what the Lord has put in my heart to speak to us about. And uh, by the grace of God, I won't take much of our time. We're just going to go through it. And uh, I believe the Lord has something He has prepared for us today. Especially every, everyone that has come here today, God has a special purpose for you and I. Yeah. Today is not just an ordinary day. This not we've been to church for years, but today is a special day. Yeah. So let us pray uh, and let's commit this into the hand of the Lord. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Father, we appreciate your goodness. We thank you for all that you have done in your church in the past. Father, we thank you for the one you did last week. There were miracles in this place. The kind of miracles you don't see around in this area. But Father, we thank you that you are doing it even in our midst here. Thank you, Father. Father, we bless your name. Father, your children have come out today to listen to you, not to me. They've left their homes, the comfort of their homes to be here today. Father, bless everyone here in the name of Jesus. Father, heal everyone here in the name of Jesus. Anyone that needs deliverance, Father, today let it be their day of deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, when we are through here today, let us come back and testify of your goodness. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, anoint me specially to speak your word. In the name of Jesus, I submit myself unto you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Uh, let's start by reading from the book of Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 to 14. Um, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 to 14. Um, it's a passage that I believe we all know very well. So, when I'm trying to read it, I might go a bit faster than I should, but I know we know the story. So, then we will we take it from there. Um, I'm watching the time as well. Um, uh, 1 Samuel 16 1 to 14. Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reading over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and go. I'm sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king amongst his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I named to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons. I'm using the uh, uh, New King James Version here. Yeah? And invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came 
that he looked at Eliam and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me, him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. Refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looked at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. Sorry. Yeah. Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen this. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, They are remained yet the youngest, and there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, with bright eyes, and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. 1 Samuel 16, 1-14 Wonderful! Um, as I said, today I'm speaking about the chosen one and I believe every one of us that have come here today has been chosen by the Lord for this time and that's why we're here and I believe that even by the time we are through here today the Lord will anoint us specially in the same way that he anointed David amongst his brethren so let's keep our expectation high even as we continue today um, on a day like this exactly 10 years ago precisely on a Sunday the 5th of August 20, 2007 5th of August 2007 today is the 6th of August yeah I was in, in a Wakefield uh, trying to start a little congregation there and I was visited by four brethren from a ministry called Faith F-A-I-T-H ministry in Leeds I have met them once before but on this occasion they just arrived and their leader is called Keith that's K-E-I-T-H yeah he requested to see who is in charge of this church right and um, he has a written prophecy that he brought for me and he said the Lord has asked him to deliver this unto me on that day to whoever is here and, um, and he asked me to judge this prophecy to judge this written prophecy and see if it's true by that I look at it I know it was true yeah Today, being the tenth year of the anniversary of this prophetic word, it's been laid in my heart to share that message with us today because I believe that it was actually delivered ten years ago, but it's meant for we that are here today. Amen. Because to be sincere, I tried to share with everyone there that then but they, they they couldn't catch it there so it was 10 years ago but the, the prophecy is for now hallelujah in paul's second letter to timothy chapter 2 verse 20 second timothy chapter 2 verse 20 the bible says that but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver but also of wood and clay some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Second Timothy 2.20-21 The summary of the prophetic word that I'm going to share with us today is 
that we as a people here now are the ones that have been chosen by the master Jesus to use for this great assignment in the world at this time it might sound too boisterous yes it is true hallelujah it is true the message then the prophetic message was divided in I probably I divided it into six parts right and uh, I will go through them one after the other then we will towards the end of it we will round it up right with prayers and uh, we will we walk in it even as the Lord put it in our heart today so the first the first part of the prophecy that was given then the first part number one he said as I gazed upon my church even my bride I see her love for me has grown cold like a married couple who has been together for years the excitement has gone she no longer rushes to me with a warm embrace she no longer dances until the early morning as she did all these years ago that's the church she has become distanced and indifferent from me no longer do we have that sweet fellowship that meant so much all that we have is becoming a distance memory my spirit cried out at her but she has gone her own way that's the church now my spirit cried after her but she has gone her own way but when we try to examine why the spirit is not in the church anymore then we might just look at the story of king saul before before the chapter 16 that we read earlier on about king saul before god rejected king saul the bible says that saul was anointed king by samuel and on that day that saul was anointed king there are quite a lot of things that happened the most important thing there is that on that day the spirit of the lord came upon saul and saul began to prophesy in fact people were wondering that is saul amongst the prophet as well because we know who are the prophets that prophesy saul was not amongst but on that very day by time samuel anointed saul as a king he began to prophesy a sign that the spirit of god has come upon saul Amen. saul that was very timid became very strong yeah. and bold saul was winning all the battles that he has to fight every demonic philistines were running away from saul i know we, we do know that there is no demons in the old testament there yeah, were all those philistines were demon possessed so that there's so all those demonic philistines were running away from saul saul was very bold then one day saul disobeyed god and the spirit of the lord let saul in this i'm just going to be a bit faster in the same similar circumstance the church was birthed on the day of pentecost two thousand years ago by the holy spirit the people spoke in new tongue and probably prophesied on that day as an evidence of their empowerment with the holy spirit the once timid apostles that were very afraid they become strong they became strong they had the spirit of god now and they were bold they were powerful but now the church has left its first love the commandment of God was not supreme anymore and the Holy Spirit has exited just like what happened to Saul Saul left his first love the Holy Spirit left and he became like ordinary person Jesus said in John 14 15 to 16 John 14 15 to 16 if you love me keep my commandment 
And I will pray the Father and will give you another helper that I may abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit came because the people loved God, kept his commandment, and Jesus prayed the Holy Spirit to come. Any day that the commandment of God is not kept because people don't love God anymore, then the Holy Spirit moves away. Don't worry, but we are getting somewhere. It's not all doom. <laughs> Hallelujah. The first time I met um, this kid from Faith Ministry, the first time they ever they had met him in the city center in Wakefield, they said to me, in fact, what I was doing then, that I had tracks, Christian literatures, and I was sharing it out in the city center then. That was some, a couple of months before they finally brought this revelation. And what I was doing was that I was giving it just to Africans because I thought English won't come to church and they might not even come back to our kind of church. <laughs> so I was just sharing it to Africans. I was looking for some Africans to give the thing there. And as I was walking away, he ran. I saw them there. I saw the kids that were for them and I didn't talk to them. I just kept them out. I was giving it to the people that matter. <laughs> Then as I was walking away, then he ran after me and said, Are you a Christian? I said, Yes. Okay. Then I said, as he was standing there, that the Holy Spirit dragged him like this and said, You should talk to me. Because they have been speak, they have been praying for the land for the past 10 years to send a spirit-filled church to the land. They have been praying, walking the land. And when they were standing there, still praying, immediately I, they saw me going, the spirit directed them and said, go and talk to him. And I came back, we had some chat, and he said, one day, I will see them again. Some months later, and I saw them on a day like this. There's something significant about today. That was 10 years ago, I'm talking about now. 10 years ago. I never saw them after that encounter up to today anymore. David was the last to be invited to that meeting that Prophet Samuel conducted in Jesus' house. But the Lord pointed David out. I believe we that are here today, the Lord is pointing us out for great exploits in the name of Jesus. We might be somewhere, somewhere there, we might not feel like the ones that would be used for this end time revival. David was not a king material. His brothers, when they appear, they look like kings. Some of them look as big as Saul, and they look that, definitely that looks like a king. And God said, No. Brethren, everyone that's here today, I'm very certain that there's something that the Lord has packaged for us Amen. on a day like this. And it's just not ordinary. It's great. Number two, let me let me go a bit faster here yeah, because I want just to just cover. I put it into six parts so that we can just cover it as quickly as we can. Yeah, I, I don't want to waste our time. Number two, that's the second part of the revelation. Now, that's what the Lord said. She, that is the church, is poor and desolate. Her eyes has grown dim. The light of my spirit no longer shines out from her to those seeking the way to my throne. Now, she, that is the church, is poor and desolate. Her eyes have grown dim. The light of my spirit no longer shines out from her to those seeking the way to my throne. The consequence of the Holy Spirit's living soul is that distressing spirit came upon Saul is a spirit of depression came upon Saul from God Saul and his army were afraid and unable to deliver the people of God from the Philistine demons anymore because fear attracts failure yes I want us to I don't know if we have a new living translation Bible there but I don't think it's on our system, but that first Samuel 16 14 in New Living Translation, I'll read it out. Now the Spirit of the Lord has left Saul 
and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. So that spirit that came upon Saul is that spirit of depression that we try to counsel, we try to give Prozac to in this land, all over the world, is actually a demonic spirit. In fact, when I look into the uh, new to, to the Message Bible, the Message Bible actually describes that spirit as a black mood settling upon Saul. Black mood. We can look, look at it again. That's First Samuel sixteen fourteen. At that point in Saul's life, that he was depressed. That was when and fearful yet, and that was when the Philistine giants, Goliath, appear, demanding a worship. And Saul and his army and the Israelites were greatly afraid. First Samuel seventeen ten to eleven. And the Philistine said. I defy the army of Israel this day. That's first Samuel 6, 17, 10 to 11. I defy the army of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard this word of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. That is the spirit that comes upon Saul. It's totally a different spirit from what God has what gave to Saul earlier on. We can compare the story of Saul with that of Samson. Samson. Samson, another big Bible character. We know Samson. We know his story very well. Samson was that judge that was very strong, muscular. Yeah, macho. <laughs> yeah. He was a very strong person. The Bible talks about the Holy Spirit come upon Sam Samson. And he does a lot of big things. With just his bare hand, he can tear a lion. He can get hold of a of a gate and take it up. He can use the jawbone of an ass and kill a thousand, thousand of a thousand Philistines. Then one day, Samson disobeyed God, and the spirit left Samson. And a time came when he thought he still had the spirit and was going to go out like before. He didn't know that the spirit has left him. The God who was Samson, they removed his eyes, chained him down, and made him to grind in the prisons. In fact, I, there's a part I love there. Judges 16.25. Judges 16.25. So it happened when their hearts were merry. That's the Philistine laws. Judges 16.25. That he said, come for Samson, that he may perform for us. So they called for Samson from the prison and he performed for them and they stationed him between these, the pillars imagine Samson that powerful guy with all the muscles with all the exploits who is he now? a performing artist for the Philistines like Samson when the Holy Spirit exited the church she lost her power to deliver the paper and instead what do we put up performance yeah, we get a nice music we get a nice um, arti artistic performance for people to come and who, who sits in the crowd and enjoy the music demonic spirits they sit down in the church I'm sure we can if we read the book of Acts we know what happened to the church in those days when it was established no demons can just sit down and have a good time in the church. They move, they just manifest. I won't go too much into that. It's a, it, I would have loved to talk more about that. But what 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 happened to Samson is what happened to the church now. We just perform for demons to enjoy themselves, sit down and have a good time. That's why we don't have too many people come to this kind of church because demons don't just sit down and cross their legs. <laughs> no, not here. <laughs> when, when they come, they speak out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me go quickly to three, uh, number three uh, of the revelation, which is um, very good for us and is encouraging. Number three says, but you are not like this. 
My spirit dwells in you. And my light shines brightly from you into this dying world. The chosen people, you are not like what I've been describing. My spirit dwells in you and my light shines brightly from you into this dying world. This is quite comforting for us here. That God is saying that we that are here today, we are not like what I've been describing earlier on. We are not like Saul, we are not like Samson, but we are like David. Praise the Lord. I'll read from Acts 13, 21 to 22. Acts 13, 21 to 22. And after all, they asked for a king. So God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. And when he has removed him, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony. That's God gave testimony about David. And said, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Brethren, that is what we are. We are the people after the heart of God. We are the chosen ones and we are going to do the will. We are the ones that are doing the will of God. Sorry, don't feel I'm a bit too post us. That's the truth. Amen. We are doing the will of God and the Holy Spirit remains with us. It might not look like, like it. It might not... It might not look like what we expected to see. God does not need so many to do what He has purposed to do on earth. Praise the Lord. In fact, if we look at it, there were just 12 disciples, 12 disciples that God put together. They invited some more people, they became 120, and the Holy Spirit fell. And those 120 changed the world. And you and I. Are going to change this world at this time. Yes. Amen. 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 So number four, let me go straight to number four. So number f- the fourth part of it, it says, Go therefore into darkness. Show the lost the way back with the light and the truth of my word that I have placed within you. Go into the darkness. Never in the history of man has there been so much darkness in the land as it is today. Evil is discussed in the parliament now freely. Evil. And ways to legalize evil is being debated. There is a debate going on. Okay, that evil thing, let's see how we can put it in the in the legal system and it's acceptable. That's the kind of discussion that goes on in the parliament now. People are even inventing new ways to do evil and be celebrated and fundings are made available to such people. You come up with a new way to do evil, the government will supply you some fund <laughs> and to perpetuate it more and you'll be supported very well. Satan has now exalted himself to a place of worship like God. Now, first, Second uh, Thessalonians two, three to four. I'm just going to look at the. I'm, I'm not going to read it, but because of the time, Second Thessalonians two, three to four. It said. So that he has got to stay in the temple of God. So he said that he is God. That's Satan. Satan is now is now sitting in the things of and uh, making himself into another God. If we read even from the book of Daniel, chapter eleven, verse thirty to thirty-two, Daniel eleven thirty to thirty-two. Uh, I'll just read the last part. It said those who do wickedly, wickedly against the covenant, it shall corrupt with flattery. That's how bad it is. The more wicked you are, the more you'll be flattered. That's the devil. That's what he's doing there. But the Bible says, but the people who know they are God, like you and I, shall be strong and do exploits. Brethren, we can still do exploits in the land, no matter how badly evil it might be. In fact, there's a passage that I love very well. It's in Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 60, 1 to 3. 
He said, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. That is the more the darkness. And deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentile shall come to your light, and the king to the brightness of your rising. Isaiah 16, 1 to 3. The more the darkness, the better the light. So that's encouraging. In fact, as, as we are talking here today, I'm not mentioning anything. But a day like this, the more the darkness, the more that when we step out for God, the light becomes very bright. Amen. So we need to be like David, who when Saul and his army retreat to their to retreat from the giant, he instead confronted the giant. Because the Holy Spirit was upon David. Um, 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 47. Uh, and um, 1 Samuel 17, 32. When David said to Saul, Don't worry. Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. 1 Samuel 17, 32. That's David. Saul was cringing. He was shaking. In his room, but David spoke to Saul and said, "Don't worry. I might be 16 years old. I've got the spirit of God upon me, and I'm going to fight the giant." And David used a perfect weapon, which is the word of God. That's the weapon that we have to fight this battle. Amen. In obedience to the call, we must go into the darkness and bring down the giant. There's a power out there. That is trying to exalt itself above what God is. And you and I are the one God has given that authority to bring that power down. Uh, Paul was speaking to King Agrippa in Acts chapter 26, verse 19 to 20. Acts 26, 19 to 20. About his calling. Paul said, Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Just the same way that we are not going to be disobedient to what God has called us to do. But declare first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and through all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent, turn to God and do the work of defeating repentance. Brethren, God has called us just like Paul, like David, to go. And going we shall go. Number five. Then we do number six and we closed. Number five of that revelation says, Do not underestimate your value in my service. I know as we are looking at ourselves, oh, who am I? Yes, that makes it better. Because you know that who are you makes the Holy Spirit to move through us. When we are empty of ourselves, the Holy Spirit can actually move through us. So he said, do not underestimate your value in my service. That is, the service of God that has called us to do, we should not underestimate our value. We are chosen people of God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just put that up, Psalm 89, 20 to 24. That 20 to 24 because I, I found out that God will not only help us to perform excellently, well beyond our capacity, but he will anoint us his anointing will set a seal of protection and God's jealousy over our lives. God, jealousy will be over our lives so that nobody can touch us anymore. I'll, I'll just look at uh, Psalm 105, verse 14 and 15. Psalm 105, verse 14 and 15. It says, He permit no one to do them wrong. He rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. By the time we go for God, we are prophets of God, we are the anointed of God. And He permits nobody to touch them. Sickness can't touch us, poverty can't touch us, ISIS bomb can't touch us. We are somewhere where there's a bomb going off, we will be surrounded. That's the word of God. Yeah. ISIS can't touch us. Amen. 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 
No bomb blast can touch us even as we go. In the name of Jesus. Jeremiah has a similar problem when he was called. Jeremiah has a similar problem when he was called. He felt he wasn't good enough. And if we read Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5, 4 to 8. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 8. That's a discussion that was going on between Prophet Jeremiah and God. I love to read it before I go to the next one, yeah? Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in your womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctify you. I ordain you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, that's Jeremiah, Ah, Lord, God, behold, I cannot speak. Of course, I cannot speak yet. For I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces. No matter how they look, don't be afraid. Just go. Because I will deliver you, says the Lord. And that's the same thing the Lord is saying to us as we go now. He will deliver us. You should not be afraid of their faces. You should not be afraid of their faces. I'll, I'll, I'll go through the next, the last one, then we will finish. Number six, which is the last part of the whole prophetic message. I was speaking about you are mine says the Lord you are all all called and chosen for this time you are mine says the Lord you are all called and chosen for this time First Peter two nine to ten. First Peter two nine to ten. The Bible says that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. Who has not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Bible says we are a chosen generation. I would rather believe the Bible or not. I'm sure we might have read the book of Esther in the past. We know the story of Esther, Queen Esther, right? When his uncle Mordecai. Uh, Uncle Mordecai asked him, ask her to go speak to the king. When someone called Haman, the Agagites, <laughs> imagine the kind of son in that Haman bears Agagites. I call him the demoniac, Agagite, Agagite demoniac. That's Haman. Haman was that man that wanted to destroy the whole of the Jews because he wanted to be worshipped. And Mordecai, Esther's uncle, will not bow down to any other god except the living God. And on this same, on this occasion, Mordecai was speaking to Esther to go, Esther to go forth and save the nation by speaking to the king on their behalf. But she was reluctant and afraid. And this very statement came up in Esther 4, 13 to 14. Esther 4, 13 to 14. He said, And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. Esther 4, 13 to 14. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this for such a time as this my brothers and sisters what Mordecai was trying to tell Queen Esther then is the same thing God is saying to us as his chosen people God is saying to you today that if we do not act now but remain in our little closet, our little churches, our little prints the Lord will send someone else. 
and the consequence of people worshipping the devil everybody will suffer from it but I believe that the more they worship the devil the more depressions that is sent to the land the more mental illnesses the more different illnesses the more things that belong to the devil that comes into the land and everybody will survive so it's time for us to go forth it's time for us to go forth I'm just going to conclude with this in two minutes I'll conclude with this here with a story uh, the story reads I was told of a lady who lives in a big house like this many years ago I don't, I'm not sure if it's a true story or not but someone told me that story <laughs> so don't hold me responsible for that story <laughs> he lives in a, she lives in a big house with some other families maybe five ten other families and um, I'm not sure if it's in Africa or it's in England or somewhere I don't know but then the houses have the toilet and the bathrooms located outside yeah, so I don't know where that fitted into. <laughs> yeah, they don't have toilets and bathrooms in the house, in the in the building like this. They will have it outside, like a public one, and everybody goes out to take their bath and everything in the morning. So this lady, and there are so many other families that live in that house, and there was just one gate that you can go through. Then there was nothing like um, fire exit. So there was just one entrance that you can go through. everybody goes in and out and there's a big gate there so this lady when she woke up in the morning she was going out to take a bath and she walked further down she looked back into the building and the building was ablaze with fire there was fire in the building and the lady looked at this and rushed back to the building she looked at the gate closed the gate Locked it up, the locked it up, and got a chain and chained the gate down to make sure that nobody comes out. Lock it very well with a padlock, and she went outside and she was jumping up and praising God and shouting that, "Oh God, thank you for for saving me from this fire. Thank you for saving me. Oh, wonderful God!" He was just dancing and praising God out there. Must be a good lady. Isn't it? She's a nice lady. No, she she was a very wicked lady, very very wicked, very wicked. Brethren, that is the state of the church now. We have been saved. We are here. We are having good time, praising the Lord. But there are others that are going to fire. They are going into the fire, but we have left them there to die. In fact, we have closed the door. And when we don't go, we close the door for them to receive salvation and come to the kingdom of God. But we are there in the church having good time. But there are tons and tons of people out there that need to be saved from fire. We need to bring them to the kingdom of God. Because as a chosen people, God has called us and chosen us for such a time like this. Praise the Lord. We shall pray. The, the, the prayer I want us to pray first is that when God chose David, when God showed David to Samuel, he said, Okay, that's him. Anoint him. And the Spirit of God came over David straight away. What I want us to pray for now, let me just rise up and, and, and pray. And pray here. Yeah. Prayer, I'm going to pray that the Spirit of God that He used to anoint David as a king, that was used to choose David, then I'm, I want to pray that Spirit to come over everyone here today in the name of Jesus. Can we just rise, put our hands a bit up? Okay. Father, Father, I have not made up this story. 
is what you have given to me and I'm sharing it today with your people Father I pray that even as we as hands are raised to heaven that you anoint those hands you anoint those hands and let those hands begin to carry the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Okay, those hands, let us use it to touch our heads and let the Lord himself anoint us afresh. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's just touch our head with those hands. God himself will anoint us from heaven. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. Let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall. Fresh fire, fresh anointing, anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let's raise your hands again. Father, we want some more, more, more of the anointing. More, 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 more anointing. More anointing. More fire. More fire. Let's touch ourselves again. Let's touch it again. Let's touch ourselves again. Let it flow. 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 Fresh, 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 fresh. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, more, 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 more. Let's raise our hand again to receive from heaven. Let, let's let's put our hand up again. Let's receive from heaven. Hands up again. Let's heaven, heaven, send that fire to those hands. Those hands, those hands, those hands. Let them receive fire again. Let those hands receive fire again. Fire of the Holy Spirit. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let's touch ourselves again. It's heaven that is anointing us. It's not man. Yes, yes, yes. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Okay, yes. Let it flow. Let it flow. God is jealous of us. He's, he's jealous of us. Anointing. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Father, fill those hands with fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. These are the chosen ones. Father, these are called, these are the called and the chosen. Let them be filled with this fresh fire. Fresh fire in the name of Jesus. Fresh, fresh fire. Okay, yes, yes. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let the fire flow. Let the fire flow. Yes, 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 yes. Take it now. Take it, take it, take it in the name of Jesus. Receive, receive, receive. Receive from heaven. Heaven, 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 heaven. Yes, send, yeah, send the fire. Send the fire. Send the fire. Let it flow. 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 Let Lay hand on people, please. Yeah, my cousin, the back of let's come forward and let's pass to school. Lay hand on us, please. Lay my cousin, the back of 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 the let the fire fall in the name of Jesus. Fresh anointing. Let it come upon you now in the name of Jesus. Receive now. Let my cousin the Kalabako shake it. Yele le my cousin the Kalabako shake it. Fire, 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 fire. The Holy Ghost. Fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 fire. F
Holy Ghost. Yes, 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 yes. Take it now. Lava koshen de bakasen de. Yele re masen de re kalaba koshen de re. Yele re masan de re kasan de re makosh. Yes. Fresh fire, fresh fire. In the name of Jesus. Fire, 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 fire. Lava koshen de. Yele re makasen de. Yele re kasen de re kalaba koshen de. Yele kasan de kalaba koshen de re makosh. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Yele ma koshen de re masan de. Yele le 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 sen de de ma koshen. Fire, fire, fire. Lava kasen de. Yele kasen de re makosh. Fire, 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 fire. Let it go. Let it go. Fresh, 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 fire. Yele ma koshen de re ma koshen de. Fresh fire. Yele ma koshen. Okay, re ma kasana. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Yele kala ba koshen de. Yele re ma kasen de re kala ba koshen. Fresh fire. Fire. Pass la ma koshen de. Yele ma koshen de. Yele ma kasan de kala ba koshen de. Father, baptize that with the Holy Ghost. Fire now in the name of Jesus. Let it flow now. Fire, fire, fire. Rabako sende de kaseke. Yele de kashen de de masande. Yes, 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 yes. Take it now in the name of Jesus. Rora kasen de de makashana from heaven, from heaven. Rabako sende.